Hi, I'm MJ Hecox here at Leopold's where we pair our bottles with books. So for this month's food and wine pairing, we've selected Monte Antico. This is a super Tuscan, which means it's a Sangiovese blend with typical Bordeaux grapes. This bottle, however, really features Sangiovese because the husband and wife winemaker team wanted to feature the flavor profile of the region that they love so much. Sangiovese really is the flagship grape for Tuscany. We selected this wine because it's bright, it's fruity, it's acidic. It can refresh your palate when you're eating a particularly complex dish, but it also offers notes of smokiness that are distinct to Sangiovese. And that's really fun if you have chorizo, prosciutto, eggplant, or even grilled or barbecued food. Decant for an hour or so if you'd like, but we think you'll enjoy it. Cheers. Hello everyone and welcome to the April edition of Cooking with the Camp Times. I'm Chris Murphy, I'm the audience director here. In just a moment, I'm gonna turn it over to our food editor, Lindsay Christians, and our guest chefs, Christy and Clark Heine. But before I do that, I'd like to thank a moment to thank the sponsors who make this event possible. The first one is Kessenix, who's our official kitchen sponsor, where you can shop like a chef. And we have, in fact, that also happens to be where we are right now in their excellent innovation center. Also want to thank Leopold's Books Bar Cafe on Regent Street. Uh, they're our official wine pairing sponsor, and they have uh, uh, brought the wine that you heard about just a few moments ago. Uh, and actually, you all of you watching at home can win a bottle of that wine, and here's how to do it. Uh, ask questions. Uh, send them to us on Zoom via the chat or via the Q&A, and I'll see those, and I'll pass them on to uh, Christy and Clark and Lindsay. And at the end of the evening, uh, the most interesting question will win the bottle of wine. I uh, also want to give a shout out too to Hinkley Productions who's here tonight to film the show. And if you'd ever like to come and see the show yourself, uh, there, there, there are eight folks here who, who get a chance to do that. The way to do it is by becoming a Cap Times member. Uh, you can contribute any amount and all the funds that we raise that way go to help support our coverage. Uh, I should say too that we are in the middle of our spring membership drive. Our goal is to raise $20,000 by the end of April and while we're in sight of that goal we're going to need a little bit more help to get there. So again to contribute or to find out more please go to membership.captimes.com. And with that I'm going to turn it over to Lindsay who was our outstanding food editor at the Cap Times. <laughs> thank you Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you for the superlative. <laughs> Everybody, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, everybody who's here in person, also for being here. Um, obviously, thank you, Christy and Clark. You're welcome. So, just to get us started, um, can you introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about Marigold? Yeah, I am Clark Heine. And I'm Christy Heine. And uh, Marigold Kitchen has been around since 2001. Oh my goodness. And uh, I've been <laughs> Time actually there as long as we have been open. Uh, John Gadow and Philip Hurley originally opened it up and uh, it's been quite a ride ever since. Uh, Clark and I met there in 2013 and had a number of years together and uh, <laughs> decided professionally to move forward with our uh, relationship. relationship. <laughs> and um, we had yeah, a number of years you know, running the restaurant and over COVID um, during the pandemic when we closed down, we did purchase it and then reopened it in 2021 so we are very very excited yeah we're a breakfast lunch restaurant focusing on local food um very busy brunch and uh yeah we're open for breakfast lunch every single day so some of the stuff you'll see today is focused on the menu that we do um just very uh, mexican california flavors try and give like an homage to the people that we work with, so. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. One thing that was really interesting to me when you mentioned that you were gonna be reopening the cafe like after COVID, um, was that you were changing some things up with the flow of Marigold. Yeah. And, and I thought, you know, this is the kind of thing where like if you work at a place every day, you like notice the little pain points, like where like, oh, well people have to gather here and there's nowhere for people to hang out and like while they're waiting for the food or whatever it is. And you were able not only to sort of identify those after working there for a long time, but also like the pandemic closure, it kind of gave you a little time to like 
like reimagine it and fix mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. So does it feel like it was an opportunity in some ways, like as you were reopening? Definitely. I think it, while we were in it, um, it was, you know. <laughs> you <laughs> notice all those things yeah. where people conjugate, like it was fill your own coffee before. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. But it was amazing also. I yeah. think it had a lot of, you know, vibrancy and a lot of uh, areas where maybe the pinpoints were that we kind of, you know, fixed. And uh, I think that we, did a pretty good job in opening it up and making it feel a little lighter and brighter yet within the same walls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The farmer's market coming back. I, get, I bet you guys are going to get slammed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> patio season next week. Yeah. Oh my yep. gosh. Rolling yeah. out the patio. So. Oh, I'm so ready. I'm so ready. <laughs> yeah, it'll be great. Yeah. So why did you choose sopes for us to do today? Well, um, you know, I think the biggest reason uh, kind of goes all the way back to the beginning of Marigold Kitchen and working with the majority of the kitchen is Mexican descent. They have been since 2001. I have known many, many of my chefs uh, for that long. It tends to be something um, within you know, the culinary world that we gravitate towards what we're interested in. And these guys, no matter what we were cooking, they always made family meals that were delicious. Um, all of the ingredients that you know, they would bring in, that they were using, um, was really, really interesting, really exciting for us. And I think throughout the years, um, getting to know these people really um, speaks volumes in who they are and we just have known them for a very long time and can appreciate their heritage. Nice. It's near and dear to our hearts. We found ourselves really liking the family meals and thought it was kind of missing in the Madison landscape where traditionally it's eggs and pancakes, which we do, <laughs> so but great. we also have that flair that, you know, pays tribute to the people that work for us. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. Yeah. Well, let's get started here. Well, yeah. where, where do we start? Okay. With base? Well, I think the first thing that we need to um, kind of back up a little bit is back to the heritage uh, part of it. And in Mexico, corn is the uh, number one staple for them. And the base of sopes is corn. Uh, we are fortunate enough. I have a producer from La Cosecha. Mm -hmm. Uh, that we get all of our uh, corn chips from. This is a great example of what um, our chips look like. We use those for chilaquiles and, um, and our salads and other things. So corn in its essence um, can't necessarily be processed in the fullest by uh, just eating raw corn. So it needs to be uh, gone through a process called nixtamization. And what that means is basically it's soaked in an edible lye that uh, kind of breaks down the enzymes of it and then also adds vitamins to it as well so we can process it a little bit better. So it's really interesting to have, um, you know, one basic, I think, element that can be created into corn chips, um, you know, different. Yeah, tostadas, you know, uh, tacos, to you know, tortillas, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Exactly, yep. So um, to get started, uh, at home, so we're gonna go back to the recipe a little bit. Uh, at home, I think, the most common varieties that you guys can find in the store. Maseca is a really um, popular brand. What this is, is ground corn that has been nixtamalized already uh, versus like a cornmeal or anything like that. And uh, then what I have here is the raw masa dough uh, that's been given to us by La Cosecha. So we can kind of get started with the cooking part. Yeah, let's do it. Think if you want to get into it a little bit. Um, so going off the recipe, I'm going to be using uh, the actual cornmeal, the maseca. And basically what you're doing, uh, grabbing a mixing bowl. I like to initially start by mixing all the dries together, like any baking, uh, making sure that the salt and the baking powder and everything is mixed all together before you're adding your liquid. So basically we have, uh, let me put the cornmeal. Are you a diamond crystal or a Morton salt person? Oh man, diamond crystal all yeah. the way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I like to ask, so, yeah. like, some people surprisingly don't care. This, like, I this like... is Morton actually. Oh, is it yeah. really? It is, it is because that is what I had at the time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like diamond crystal. I feel like I'm less likely to over salt things with diamond sure. crystal, right. but, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, it doesn't Morton's necessarily, it doesn't break down as quickly, uh, the yeah. Morton doesn't, so. 
Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just adding, uh, it's approximately one to one, but it is just shy of one to one. You can always add a little more water once you kind of start feeling out um, the texture of the cornmeal. What it, you're looking for, yeah. Is it the kind of thing that's affected by like how dry your kitchen is? There is humidity that could, yeah, that could definitely come into play. Um, I bet seasonally, I think you could probably notice a variable, you know, where you'd have to compensate for that. Um, also, you're using lukewarm water just to kind of uh, start uh, the corn, you know, breaking down and absorbing. So what you're looking for um, is something that's just started to come together like that. Uh, basically, I would just get right in there with your hands um, so you can feel out. Yes. It's super fast. It's yeah. really fast. Yeah, it's yeah. great. It's, it's just, it's probably one of the quickest doughs. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's Ever. great though. <laughs> so um, when using raw corn, um, it's basically like this. It's basically the same technique, only when the corn is ground, it's already very soft. So it's about a third um, water to the actual corn meal. Unfortunately, we don't have the availability like many, you know, other areas maybe in Central America do, um, which is kind of sad. But what of the of the kinds of corn or of the actual raw corn? Oh, the raw corn, of sure, the ground sure, sure. raw okay. corn. So what you're looking for is something that is sticky together um, in between like kinetic sand and Play-Doh a little bit. Something <laughs> that, you know, when you break it, it does break apart, um, but it's not completely stuck to your fingers all over. <laughs> so basically, once you get this together, where I am just shy you know, of about a cup and a half to two cups of the masa, I would cover this with a wet paper towel. Um, or a wet, thank you, wet cloth. And the reason for that is it just needs to kind of sit and absorb and let that rest for a little bit. How long yeah. do you need to rest? 20 minutes, Okay, I think is, yeah. Which is nice because once you get that done, you can start on your next ingredient and... For sure, yeah. yeah. Sort of like built-in resting time where I have uh, like time to do other things. I like it, okay. Right, exactly. So on to that. On to next up, we're gonna start our pickled onions. So we're gonna get the water and the vinegar. I'm gonna step behind you here. Thanks. Yeah. So I've got two cups of water and a cup of white vinegar. So white vinegar, like distilled white vinegar? Distilled white vinegar yeah. works totally fine. If I have white wine vinegar or other things, I can that cheat it? That works okay. totally cool. fine too. I feel like I've cheated it in the past where I'm like, I don't, I get distilled white vinegar either usually for cleaning yeah. or or like to make Easter eggs. Do you guys have mm -hmm. yeah, totally. Easter eggs? Yeah, totally, like, yeah. <laughs> I can tell you Easter eggs with vinegar. It totally works. And I think the difference is just the actual percentage of the acidity in that. You may need to just use a little more water, a little less water. Sure, But yeah. sometimes that's just preference also. Um, even if you pickle something and you wanna bump that acidity up in the end, if you use like a balsamic or apple cider, you can always Ooh, just yeah. hit it with another splash at the end and kind of accomplish the same. Yeah, that was a fourth cup of white sugar. And now we're gonna get our wahio chilies. So these here are wahio dried chilies. You can get those in at Woodman's in the Mexican aisle. They have dried chilies, so those are available pretty much, you know, at a lot of grocery stores. And I'm going to add that right into the vinegar. So I'm going to get this started just on medium high on the stove. I think something to note with the Guajillo chilies is it's a staple in our everyday at Marigold Kitchen. It's something that goes in our potatoes. It's something we get in by the 25 pound bag. Um, it's a really mild chili, but it has a really kind of deep, nice uh, flavor to it. It's not necessarily hot. Uh, and it also adds this beautiful, gorgeous red color. So it's something that uh, we love to use. 
one thing that I noted, you were asking, you were calling for guajillo chili powder in one of mm -hmm. the recipe. Yeah. And so, and and you made a good point that like if you try to um, grind them, they're kind of bendy. Yeah. So you just toast right. them. So there's instructions in the recipe for like you want to warm them up, you want to toast them a bit, dry them out, and then you can grind them up. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. This is this is uh, how they come to us. I'm kind of guessing that these are a little fresher than the ones you may buy at Woodman's, which maybe don't, or maybe a smaller grocery store that they just don't move off the shelves as much. And so they might be a little crunchier. If you do get them and you find um, that they're just really pliable, you can just pop them in the oven and you're able to crisp them up and then um, use them in your coffee grinder or your separate spice grinder um, or something like that to kind of make the powder. Chris, yeah, I think Chris mm -hmm. has something. You have Hi, one quick question. Yeah. There's a viewer who wanted to note that we have reminded again what, what kind of the chili, the, the dried chili is. Wahio. Maybe Sorry. maybe you should spell yeah, it. Yeah, it's G U A J I L L O. Guajillo. Guajillo. Yeah. Exactly. And those potatoes, that recipe using these peppers has been with us for 20 years. Uh, the Ricardo that makes those potatoes, literally the same same guy has been making them also for 20 years. <laughs> um, and so it's kind of fun because we've incorporated them into, I think, a lot more recipes than originally we were using them for. I love that. I have also learned the hard way, even with the dried chilies, um, that when I'm taking the seeds out, <laughs> I do want to have gloves on. Right. You, that is yes. great. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because you'll go to, like you'll like go to like rub your nose like or touch your eye or something, and you're like, oh right, chili peppers. Just because, just because they look a little, you know, you said they're not too. Because they're hot. mild, right? Yeah. That's no. gonna hang with you for hours, <laughs> hours on end. Exactly. Yeah, it will. It can sting your eyeballs and yeah. your nose. Yeah. yeah. And that's also one of those <laughs> things that with the seeds, you know, if you yeah. don't like super spicy, you can take the seeds out, and it'll be a little more mild for you. Yeah. But if you do, you can totally leave them in too. I wanted to note something on the recipe with the red onions. I noticed um, in the physical writing, there is not any water added to it. So for everybody at home, if they read the directions, you would have made them last night. <laughs> Yes. And they probably were really vinegary, I'm okay. guessing. Oh gosh, so okay. possibly, um, you know, that's something that it, it it can be extremely cloying if you're just like, you know, ingesting a lot of vinegar. So just make sure if you just, I would rinse them, I yeah. think maybe at home before you actually eat them tonight. There was a related question from, from the audience at home. Yeah. Asked if, if two cups of water was added to the pan, Yes, two, two cups, cups of, of water. water. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And so, good job, guys. I'm gonna make it, <laughs> I need to make yeah. a note to add that to the recipe after. This sometimes happens. Like, uh, we'll do the recipe, and then as we're making it, people will be like, oh, wait, actually. Yeah. So I so don't remember to update it when I get home. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, that's totally cool. Yeah. I'm not sure if, um, yeah, how, I just don't think maybe the liquid probably covered all the onions either, but. You yeah. know what? They're going to be delicious. Yeah. <laughs> I've done, I've done pickled onion with just vinegar before, and they're strong. They're strong, yeah. yeah. And, well, if you did bad, just, and if you did just use vinegar, yeah. you can add a little water and just rinse it out a little bit yeah, yeah. to just bring down. Just the offset it a little yeah. bit. Exactly, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just uh, heating this up right now. It's almost ready to go. Sugar melts into it with the vinegar. And then I'm just gonna pour it right over. So this is basically um, just like a quick pickle. It's something that I would let sit overnight, at least to kind of impart all the flavors, but certainly um, within a couple hours, it could be ready to go. When you cook down and reconstitute these, are gorgeous when you, you open them up. Um, this one is obviously gonna be very dry but it's something that you can open up and there's this little thin membrane that gets really nice and soft in there. Uh, we'll take our knives and just kind of pull that out and be able to incorporate that right back into the onions, which allows for this gorgeous red color to kind of come through. So pretty. Yeah. It also makes onions really pretty as well. Yeah, for and sure. I have a question about the chilies. There's, okay. a, viewer who, there's yeah. a viewer who wanted to know where you get them in bulk. Oh. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, they have them at Restaurant Depot. I'm not sure if, they do. if yeah. you can actually go in there without being a member. Lauren, I don't think you can, I right? Know. Very exclusive. Uh, super. <laughs> I got a card Very and everything. <laughs> yeah. 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 But um, I think uh, maybe GFS, maybe, you know, something 
some other kind of uh, restaurant supply store like that, possibly. I bet you'd be able to find it online. Put a mercado of some yeah. sort. Yeah, right. Yeah. Let's go local and actually, right, go to. Yeah. Yeah, maybe somewhere on Park Street. Right. I'm sure there's plenty of opportunities there. Mm -hmm. So that vinegar mixture brought to a boil, and I'm just going to pour these right over the onions. So that didn't take long, and that chili already is pretty soft. Yeah, pretty soft. Pliable. Yeah. I cheat on pickles all the time, where I'm like, eh, it's been a couple hours, it's fine. Yeah. Um, because I'm not planning ahead enough, probably. <laughs> Uh, but it, they are delicious, and then they last for a little bit, and I can put them on literally everything. Right. right. Well, again, <laughs> yeah. I did put that. These will last for a week, but they don't really last in our house mm -hmm. for a week often. I mean, three days, and it's like, you know, eating them on everything, so. And that's one yeah. of those, like, kitchen staples that are, like, good to have. They can, they work on everything, and they add that acidity that you're looking for to round out a dish. Sure. So I'm going to leave these just on the, the counter at home and I'll leave those until it gets room temp and then I'll put them in the fridge after that. So on to salsa verde. That's kind of the next uh, take mission this? here. I wanted to kind of go over real quick uh, tomatillos and basically um, how to clean them at home. And it's something I think people don't necessarily know how to use tomatillos a lot. They're just, they are kind of, they're extremely acidic and um, they knew, do need to be cooked down to at least bring out and round out kind of uh, their whole body. But they do have a really wonderful way of thickening uh, sauces and soups and kind of adding that acidity without adding just like straight lemon juice or straight vinegar or something like that. Uh, we use these a lot in different applications mm -hmm. um, for kind of that acidity necessity yeah. um so cleaning them at home basically these <laughs> these are very easy because they um they're kind of like a ground cherry where they have like that external outer shell but they're extremely sticky often um, when you get them in the store you're gonna see where the the skin itself is kind of all stuck to it so basically if you put it in a bowl of water with just a splash of soap uh, oh. It immediately just releases that and you're able, you can just pop them right off. I never would have um, thought of soap. <laughs> and then you're, yeah. you're just lightly cleaning it as well, yeah, yeah. you know, which is probably also a good thing. Um, these, for example, are extremely easy to clean just because they pop right out of there. But some of them, this is a really great example where if you, you know, a little warm water, a little soap, and that should just pop right off of there. A friend of mine grows these, and it, it always seems to me like they grow a little easier than tomatoes do, which, yeah, like, they're, you they're, grow them in the same way, in the kind of the same place, you know, and whatever, but, like, her tomatillos are always, like, going nuts. They're kind of tree-like. Yeah. They're a little more yeah. massive than, like, a tomato, a little more branchy and a little more um, sturdier, I think, a little bit, but, I love yeah, salsas cool. and, like, a, yeah. Anything that's, like, like fresh with whatever herbs I've got around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really good. So these um, in the recipe uh, at home, you guys are going to be using your broiler. Here, we're gonna just pop them in like a hot convection oven. Um, we don't necessarily, we're not gonna fire up the big pizza oven tonight for that. Um, although that would be kind of cool, but you know, <laughs> gonna just um, use a convection oven. I can't remember if this pizza oven has a name. Does this pizza oven? Clifford, the big red oven. Clifford, the big red oven. Love it, love it. Perfect, yeah, yes. <laughs> Great. Oh, sorry. No, you're all good. So I think um, we're just going to make enough uh, for about 12 sopes. So I just kind of like to cut these up um, in the restaurant. We're looking at massive sheet trays. Um, we get in about 90 pounds a week. Uh, the cases are about 35 pounds, like three to four <laughs> oh cases God. sometimes yeah. a week. Yeah. And so we're roasting when we, you know, put, put, the uh, yeah, racks in the oven, it's about tomatillos. eight trays of tomatillos at a time that we're going through. So we don't have the luxury to even cut them up. It's just kind of like get them in there and, yeah. and let them do their thing. Um, but I do have to say a little bit of salt and a little bit of canola oil right away helps them start breaking down. So I like to, you know, just, just to start the process is to just get them going. Um, Jalapenos, serranos, same with any kind of pepper. This is the moment, if you want it spicy, I say go for it. If 
you're hesitant, <laughs> be hesitant because sometimes they can be extremely hot. I think uh, poblanos can be as spicy as a jalapeno. Jalapenos can be spicier than a serrano sometimes. Um, I just like to, you know, literally cut it in half, see where you're at. Um, I usually take the tip off like, and, and taste it. Just like, because sometimes you know, little... jalapenos will be like green pepper, like right. nothing. Sure, right. And you're like, well, it won't matter if I put that in. Right. But other times it's like, touching the sun and you're like well right. okay good to know <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna just remove these just to you know be safe and... ah chef hands i'm always like can we put gloves on <laughs> oh yeah yeah i just i always i always like have i have this memory of, of trying to take my contact lenses out oh see so that know? would be major uh-huh yeah <laughs> yeah you only do that once you only do that once you're like, no, I'm living in these contact lenses out for the rest of my life. I will. <laughs> so as far as the sizing of onion goes, um, I think I said like a medium onion. Mm -hmm. uh, I like a lot of onion in my salsa verde. I think it tends to round it out. It makes it a little creamier um, and doesn't... Once you roast it, it, it's not as prominent as it is if it was like a raw onion. So this is a, kind of a substantially large onion. For them. Yeah. This is... Um, People who write recipes, this is like a whole thing. This was the like hardest how thing. How much is a medium onion? Like yeah. how much does it weigh? How many yeah. cups is it? Like, yeah. it's a whole deal. It's a whole thing. And I think the hardest part about doing this was getting it in writing, all of it. Yeah. I'm <laughs> glad that you did it, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I noticed that you're using a yellow onion. Uh, the recipe has white onion. It seems like it would be delicious either way. Yeah. Yeah. For okay. sure, okay. definitely. Yeah, um, I wouldn't do red just because that is something that will impart color and yeah we just kind of want to keep it a nice green uh red will definitely muddy it up a little bit yeah so good to know okay yeah definitely uh so i'm just going to hey chris and then just a couple questions uh count times executive editor katie dean watching it watching at home wanted to know if the, the pickling is a quick pickle or a quickle a quickle. Love, I love it. it. I love it. I don't know if that was a short turn of phrase or that was just something I had not heard of. I love a quickle. I think a, a quickle. We love a quickle. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah. Katie, it's a quickle. <laughs> I'm going with it. I love it. I love it. So I just uh, put, what did I write on here? A tablespoon, maybe? Canola oil. Um, two, three cloves of garlic, some onion, serrano pepper, jalapeno pepper, and the tomatillos, and literally just pop it in the oven. Um, for the broiling, I would do six-ish minutes on high just till it starts like kind of, the tomatillos are gonna start getting nice and black and blistering on the outside. Um, the onions are gonna turn a little black. That's all good flavor. You want all yeah. of that to happen. I have a, um, a particularly elderly oven, so I will often just crank it up to like 475 and like do that depending on how the oven is feeling. Mm -hmm. We just replaced the element for the third time. And I'm like, you know what, maybe I just need a new oven. <laughs> grilling. You can yeah, grill right? them. You can grill them. Grilling oh, that'd works. Be great. Grilling works. The tomatillos can tend to burst open. You have to do it on about a medium high heat or yeah. else you're just like really kind of charring and they're just dripping on the outside and then raw in the middle. So oh, it's okay. nice to at least like cook, cook them through a yeah. little bit. We got a question? Yeah. Yes. How important is it to use uh, canola oil instead of olive oil? Can you, are, there, are there options? Uh, certainly you could use olive oil. I think canola is a little, um, imparts a little less flavor. Um, so I like to use canola oil, I think over olive oil, just because especially some really nice olive oils impart a lot of flavor. Yeah. The canola oil has a different smoke point too, avocado right? Oil it does. Works yeah. Great. Olive oil yeah. is a lower exactly. smoke point. Yep. And if you're doing something really high heat, I feel like sometimes I get bitterness from olive oil if I use it Certainly. on really high heat. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, canola oil is also cheaper, <laughs> right. which I like. Very true. Yes. yes. <laughs> but I'm sure you said, like, if you had olive oil, you could. I love you brought the tortilla press. I'm so pumped about this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So next up, we are going to start making our chorizo. If, so if yeah. you were a lazy person, for example, or just a person with less time, um, yeah. is there a chorizo brand that you like that you would sub? <laughs> That's like a no. <laughs> no. No. And and I guess maybe I haven't given it enough chances sure i find no, it's fine. that's fine yeah. <laughs> and that's why we started making our own i think is because the ones that you get in the store tend to be the ground in a long kind of a tube um 
And they're just absolutely mush. They're stringy. They're a little bit way overly greasy and a little bit kind of just like deep in flavor. Um, we actually started making our own because again, back to like even my guys in the kitchen that they were able to, to get it at their stores. They were buying it from us because they were like, oh my gosh, this is like so much better. So if you can I do, that. I would say even do the mixture of the spices and just make a, make a whole, you know, container of it. And if you're really like going to go from chorizo often, just kind of measure out that way, but it's just yeah. ground pork. The last time Which I did a chorizo spice, easy. I did that, and I like yeah. I had extra chorizo spice, and I put it on veggies, yeah, which is totally. delicious. Right. Um, and yeah, I would just I would put it on like whatever I had. I was like, well, I've got some chicken here. This is chorizo spice. It's probably good, and it was. Yeah. It worked yeah. out great. Sure. It's like potatoes. It can work as like yeah. a dry rub. I mean, yeah, it is yeah. like a dry rub. Yeah, oh, totally. Yeah. Definitely. So I got two and a half pounds of ground pork here. You can get any grocery store in the meat section. And we're just pretty much spicing it up. We're gonna mix in the spices. So kicking it off, got the Wahio chili powder. That's gonna be the star of the show. Got the paprika. Sweet paprika. Domestic. 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 Okay. Domestic. Yeah, there's a, a sweet, hot, smoked. Domestic, Hungarian, Hungarian, Hungarian. Yeah. Exactly. Spanish. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and we could do very easily um, kind of, you know, switch out to Spanish paprika, which would be a wonderful kind of way to use the majority of those and then yeah. just kind of put it in a little bit. I've got the La Mesa chili powder. La Mesa's not a brand that I know. You know, and I wrote that down and I said, oh yeah, that's probably not even, <laughs> La Mesa meaning table. Okay, yeah. Meaning domestic exactly Got it. Okay. yeah just chili, regular, regular chili, chili powder. powder awesome good okay <laughs> anything you want <laughs> and we're gonna do the salt and it's two tablespoons love that all right and garlic powder and we have one tablespoon of that and i've got the cumin right here cumin is so important i think i agree definitely yeah. <laughs> and the oregano And this is kind of my favorite part right here. And this is the cinnamon and the coriander. Mm. And that is the thing that'll bring it around and you'll be like, oh, what is that? Oh. You know, it's a smaller <laughs> amount, but it really just kind of gives it a different flavor. Yes, oh. hello. Just American That's American a great question. question. Yeah. yeah, we actually do just use the American. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the question was about just, where the oregano is from. It is a totally different flavor, although I think um, it's something that is not a super prominent flavor. So it just kind of helps round it out a little. Yeah. Had a quick question on the spices. Is there cinnamon and coriander? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And going back to the oil, someone asked about avocado oil. Is yeah. that a possibility? Most definitely. Yes. Avocado oil is another wonderful oil that um, has a pretty high smoke point and does not impart a ton of flavor. Yeah. So yeah, that works. I started stacking grapeseed um, as well, sometimes for frying. Um, I was trying to use sunflower oil more sometimes for in certain applications and, and it's delicious and it's local, but it's expensive. It's yeah. expensive. Yeah. yeah, but it's wonderful. Like I love sunflower oil. Um, the guys who are coming next month from Seven Acre Dairy use a okay. lot of sunflower oil. Okay. Like that's where they splurge. And I'm like, oh, it works. It's got great <laughs> flavor. So once those spices are all Ooh, mixed working in. Working it in, yeah. Yeah. Once they're all mixed in, I'm just gonna saute it in a pan, just fry it up. And I'm you know, just gonna take it over here. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's like a lump of meat. I know, great. Right. <laughs> Transfer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lauren, Lauren was well, promoting her pork kitchen because Lauren is, is our vegan chef here. Ah, so she's, she's right. seeing the meat and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, it's been painted one or two. <laughs> <laughs> So there's so, enough fat content in the pork that I wouldn't put any oil down or anything in the pan. It should be totally fine. So I'm just checking the uh, tomatillos. We're going to turn this guy up a little bit, I think. I need a little boost on Connie, please. 
Connie the Connie. <laughs> Who does Steele have? Who's Steele and Connie? What are you thinking, 425? Sure, hit it. Hit it, Connie. Great. Christy, I had a question a little earlier from a viewer who wanted to know, of all the dishes you've made at Marigold Kitchen, what is your favorite? Oh my goodness. Oh, that is a hard one. I love the chili quiles. I really do. I think that that uh, is a dish that I love so can be much. done in so many different ways. And the way that we do it, so we take um, these corn chips, literally these corn chips, and toss them in salsa verde, and then have guajillo braised chicken, um, with a little bit of chihuahua cheese on top, and then uh, sunny up egg, pickled red onions, <laughs> a little bit of pickled jalapeno. Well, I guess mine is blown. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of, the, the way that sometimes chilaquiles are done is they're actually tortillas, not chips, tortillas oh. that have been layered, um, you know, and then baked kind of like lasagna. And so it's just a completely different preparation. I think it's a special dish. I think these chips do lend themselves um, to, you know, just holding that hot salsa and being able to stay crispy throughout. It has delicious flavor. Breakfast nachos. So these chips, the these, literal best. Exactly, right. <laughs> and nachos anytime. Yes, right, I love it. Um, these have blue, red, uh, white, and yellow corn in them. They're beautiful. So they, they are, they're chips. gorgeous. And they're sturdy, I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He actually uses uh, the salt, he grinds it, and so it's just like an actual shaker that he shakes it over, and it's just powdered. Nice. So, yeah, evenly coated. Is so I guess, there, yeah. Oh, there's one here who heard uh, the discussion about, about vegan, uh, and was wondering if there was a, a, a port, an alternative for this dish if you are vegan to pork. Yeah. Certainly, yeah. definitely. Um, I, the salsa's delicious on anything as vegan as you can get it. Yeah. And then um, so I would do, you know, grilled veggies are great. Uh, the actual, you know, masa itself is vegan. So certainly that's not a problem. But I think that you could you could twist it and do any any sauteed tofu inside would be great with salsa on top. I think that we, would be delicious. We are huge fans of tempeh at the restaurant. Tempeh we have a couple awesome. of tempeh dishes. So tempeh works as like a vessel where mm -hmm. it'll take on any kind of seasoning you give it. So you can use the same chorizo seasoning with tempeh. Yeah, no doubt. It's a great it idea. would totally yep. work. And it's just, it's got a little different texture. It feels a little more natural than tofu to me personally. I like tofu for different things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I was looking at this recipe for sopas because I, I was thinking about that too, actually. And I was like, the only thing, like all you would need to really do is swap out the chorizo and, and right. leave off the cheese mm -hmm. and just sub in some grilled veggies or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it'd be perfect. Yeah. And easy. Mm -hmm. So definitely that's like delicious it. to me. Yeah, really, I mean, a sope is just a carrier for all of that deliciousness, you know? So it's <laughs> yeah. like whatever you want to put inside, I think really would work. All right. So yeah, we got the meat going. Meat's going. Meat's so going. Stuff is going. Yeah, I'm gonna start tor tortillaing. Do it. All right, you have <laughs> so the I did, press. I brought our press. Um, this happens to be uh, one of my uh, my right hand in the kitchen, uh, Petra. This is her personal press. This has been with her for 20 years. I bet thousands of tortillas have gone through here. Um, this is as simple as it gets. I mean, this is super duper easy to use. I know you guys don't have one of these at home probably. So the way that we like to do it, and actually maybe even yet a little faster, uh, is if you have a Ziploc baggie. So basically if you're using the press, let's just back it up a little bit. Um, and we will roll out the masa and everything, but I just kind of want to show you. Um, so if you're using the press, could I have the uh, masa, please, Lindsay? Oh, is that over here? Okay, yeah. <laughs> sorry. It's like, where? oh, put your put your right on. Yes, it. no, totally. yeah. I like the description of like what size balls you're supposed to have. Like this is like a ping pong. Um, yeah, we can back up. A golf here. ball. Exactly. So about two cups should make approximately ten to twelve tortillas kind of depends on how thick you want them um, we are doing sopes obviously so I would do them just a little bit thicker uh, the best way to split up this is just by literally quartering it and then taking about three per ah. so you cut in quarters and then three again exactly okay. to get about 12 yeah and you can just literally break them you could weigh them out. Um, I don't think it's necessary. It looks like making cookies. Exactly. Like, it feels like making yep. cookies. Yeah. <laughs> right. 
So we're just going to separate these out. Do you worry at all about overworking it? Like, can it get overworked? No, not necessarily overworked. overworked, but it definitely could dry out. Okay, sure. So okay. if you're working with it, um, maybe for a little bit too long, sure. Uh, okay. You could always have your hands with just a little bit of water and kind of, yeah. you know, okay. reconstitute it a little bit, which works just fine. If you're making a ton of them, I would, uh, you know, maybe get a sheet tray and start by lining them up, and then get a wet towel, put them on the top, and then continue on with the rest of them. Got it. Just okay. So they don't dry out. Especially the first time, if I'm making something like this, it's going to take me long enough that I right. probably will need the help <laughs> of the wet towel. Well, and it's amazing to watch like my guys crank these out for any any special occasion that we have at the restaurant, any kind of birthday or Christmas, or there's always somebody bringing in tamales and sopes mm -hmm. and all of those, you know, Sounds lovely. delicious things. Yeah. So with this, um, I'm going to use this first and then I'm going to go to just the method that I think we can all do at home okay. together. Uh, so taking a Ziploc baggie, uh, literally just opening it up, taking the top off of it, and then going through. I think butcher's paper would work, parchment paper would work, uh, something a little bit heavier than like saran wrap. Like clean wrap, yeah, yeah, sure. Exactly. So opening that up, putting your masa ball right in the middle, flattening it and just a plates, little bit. If you don't have this, right? You plates work really well. Um, the only thing with the bottom of plates sometimes is they're beveled. Let's see what these are like, excuse me. You know, you're, you're always kind of fighting maybe a little foot or something like that. So a pie plate works great, a uh, casserole dish, any kind of like something that has, I like to use oh, yeah. this really small little cutting Thanks, board guys. is perfect. Is, is there there's some place where folks can go to, to buy a press or to, to order one? Uh, mm -hmm. Any of the Mercados here definitely would have, okay. have a press okay. in town. So all you're doing is just lightly flattening it and then taking it um, and not going, I don't know if we can see that on camera, but not going all the way down. We're not quite making a tortilla. If we go too thin when you're actually frying it, you're not able to pull up on the edges like we're going to do in just a little bit. So something like that. A thick sugar cookie. Like a, yeah. I'm trying to think like what else is this? thickness like, like a quarter inch maybe mm -hmm. like about a quarter inch exactly yeah yeah so uh, let me see if I have I'm so if you're doing these at home and you want to obviously when you start making them I would just start making all of them um, when you put them onto a surface make sure that you have a piece of parchment paper something again that you're able to actually pull them off of because it will if you stick. go right onto yeah if you go right onto your table or your cutting board or anything like that you're gonna have to basically um, and when you said about reworking them you could take this it's not sad and literally just do that okay. and then just rework it again yeah, okay. so if it rips if it's something um, that you're kind of you know not quite getting it don't feel like you can't just ball it back up and try it again we love a forgiving I, mm -hmm. I, I always love anything that's like here's what to do if you screw it up because like chances are good <laughs> yeah right <laughs> but I'm gonna screw it up. right so that's a little bigger so let's go back to just the basics of having something flat. So if you just take your cutting board or again, like a casserole dish or something, and then just lightly press on it enough. Oh, just yeah. create that. Okay. So if you're making these in advance, are you storing them like you're doing right now or are you making little the little edges first before you store them? Um, actually, we're gonna fry them flat and then make the little edges. Got it, okay. There's a couple different ways to do it where some people do make the edges first. I think it's a lot easier to fry something flat 
and then get the bottom nice and crispy. Then when you have the edges and you flip it over, they have a tendency to kind of splay out. It just gets hot and just, uh, Okay. They don't hold their form as well. That might be a little different than what's in the recipe, I think. Oh, so, yeah? Yeah. Just Do we make the edges first? I think so. Am I like, whoa? <laughs> and I thought about okay, it. I can do the edges first. <laughs> and I thought, no, no, I thought about it when I was, when I was doing it, when I was editing it. And I was like, so, but if there's edges, how does it? Oh, yeah. They're going to hold, it's going to hold it up, depending on how deep your oil is, right? Like, it'll. Yeah, and depending. It actually says to fry it first. <laughs> and then pinch the edges. Oh, good, yeah. good, never mind. Good. We're all I'm good. Lying. Okay. I'm lying. That's good. Yeah, if you pinch your edges <laughs> first and then you flip it, your edges are just gonna be warm. Once the dough gets warm, it gets pretty soft. Oh, good, okay. You know, so. All right, you, you have, how's uh, your chorizo doing? It's ready to go. <laughs> and we have a pan that's getting warm for you. If you wanna start frying, so, I can keep. Cool. Keep smushing. Yeah. That's what this is called. This process is smushing. It's a smush. It's a smush. <laughs> so you can see this one I got a little overly, I guess, intense with. I'm going to take that off. If it is too thin, it's harder to pull up on the edges. So I would say at home, err on being thicker, especially for your first ones. It, it, it's just going to be a little easier, I think. Sure. Okay. The end. All right. Music. Don't put the cutting board on the burner. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I'm just putting a very little bit of oil. I think I said a teaspoon, half a teaspoon, something um, to, yeah, one teaspoon. So just a little bit, just enough to get them started. And we're not necessarily fully frying them at this point. We're just going to kind of give them a light fry and capture okay. like a nice little film on the top of it. Got it. Okay. Oh, I'm going to give myself a little landing zone here. Once they're fried initially, you don't necessarily need to have anything on the bottom. This is awfully convenient to have this little yeah. silt pat right here, but don't need that. And I'm looking for the spatula. Yeah, it's right here. Sweet. So with the oil, I'm just looking for it to not necessarily, definitely not start smoking. Uh -huh. It's like <laughs> shimmering a little bit, like it's, it's, it's moving yeah. a little. Um, and it's the best way, I mean, honestly, the best way is just to drop your ingredient in there. Oh yeah, see, so it and starts it's it's floating, bubbling, bubbling and moving. Yeah, I, I almost like I want them to be able to see this, but <laughs> should we throw it on camera? Yeah. Okay. Bring the pan over. So I'm just literally dropping that in there, and once it starts bubbling right away, it'll start floating up to the top, and your oil's ready. If it doesn't start bubbling, it starts absorbing into your product, and it just creates a really heavy. Um, greasy, heavy. I just want to say how incredibly fast that was in comparison to like how I cook at home. Like the oil heated up so quickly. That's it's nice so dough. much faster. Yeah. I, started, I started the panel. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. Like, that's like instantaneous. <laughs> like I knew gas was better, but still, wow. So I think in the recipe, Thank you for it says, uh, <laughs> fry a minute to a minute and a half. Air on the minute. There's very little oil. There's very, very little, little oil. oil. Honestly, so when you're making tortillas, you don't use any oil. Wow. It's just on like a hot comal or, or a, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, whatever really hot surface. You make them on rocks if you want to. Um, <laughs> so I'm just, you don't want them to get brown. You really don't want to cook them too much more other uh, than just kind of searing off the very outer surface of that. And you'll see why. If you cook them too much and they get too crunchy, you're not able to actually pull to make that little wall around, which sure. is what holds all of your ingredients. And I like a little thickness to them. Yeah. I think you get two different textures. You get the crispy and then it's a little like softer on the inside. Just a little, yeah, it's kind more of More interesting. Like, yeah, 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 more, more interesting variety. that way. So 
a sope can be kind of like a street snack. You don't need to like, yeah, right definitely. because it, you're not you're not having the ingredients fall out. Like it's no. like a little self-contained. It's containing, container. yeah. Yeah. Great yeah. for like a party or something like oh, that. Oh yeah. Because you don't need um, utensils. Yeah, you don't need you can pick them up. You can pick them up. Yeah. So I fun. should mention, which I didn't when I made them, but I like to put baking powder in with the masa. That's not necessarily traditional, um, but I think it does make them a little lighter, a little airier, a little fluffier. Um, sometimes, definitely, if you buy like pre-made sopes, they're quite rubbery and thick and heavy, and this kind of adds just a little bit of lightness and allows for you to kind of um, move it around a little bit more without it being so heavy. So this is as long as I would do them. It's not, pretty raw in the middle. They're not cooked all the way nope. at this point. Exactly. Okay. You notice they're still a really light color. Exactly, yep. They're not crunchy. They're very pliable. The outside is just starting to get a little bit dry. So this one where that is a little bit brown, that is as far as I would take it. If they do get a little bit brown, maybe flip it and use that as your bottom because what you're going to do from here as it is still warm still pliable is to start by pulling just in the middle to form that little wall you can let them cool too my hands really can handle <laughs> i was gonna say i was like, very hot. Oh my i was like wait a minute that's right out of the pan i should probably say you can let them cool for like five minutes is not going to, especially if you're doing a bunch at a time, it's not gonna, you know, you can't just crank right through them. But all you're doing is just kind of moving them. If they crack a little bit, that's okay. Um, that's what we're looking for is just that little bit of wall to hold the ingredients. Nice, Maybe okay. that one. <laughs> It takes practice. Yeah. I haven't been practicing that long. <laughs> I haven't. These are something that it's very intriguing to us, I think. We've been, you know, playing around with this masa thing for uh, a couple months now, but it's something that certainly. We, we just did a uh, an event for the Wisconsin Chamber Orchestra, oh, and yeah. we did uh, mini sopes, so they were just about half the size of these, you know, just like a single two, one or two bites. Did you so use like a, dipper, a little dipper muffin toes pan or like? We did. Yeah, yeah. we Let's actually say, that's exactly what we did. Pan, yeah. Little mini muffin pan, and then that's I had the I had uh, some masa left over and <laughs> took it home and we made waffles. Yeah. Because I was really thinking of like, well, how can we make this sweet? What can we do to kind of reincorporate, you know, just like what we do in breakfast land? Um, it was great at home. We didn't recreate them actually for the restaurant, but. So but this super is super gluten free, like oh yeah, different they're gluten free option. for sure. This one's not working out quite as well as I wanted it to. That's okay. All right. Well, hang on one second. Yeah, Chris, how are we doing on time? About six, seven minutes left. Okay. Great. All yeah. right. Run it. Thank you. So we have. <laughs> so let's just talk about the chorizo. Um, the initial frying. What do I have here? This is a great way to show it. So all of those little crispy bits in the bottom, that's what we're that's what we're kind of going for. Not through the entirety, but that's what's gonna add all of the flavor and My all of the, part. the crunchy. Me too. Yeah. You know, exactly. <laughs> this is the best. Do you wanna do salsa or anything? Yeah. Okay, it's ready for you right over there. Great. I'll continue frying these up. Nice. Salsa Verde, let's use, um, I think we're talking food processor or Vitamix or some other immersion, like a handheld immersion blender works really well. Um, basically something that you're just gonna blend all of these ingredients up with. Are you able to get that? I have the processor. Yeah. Okay. I can move it over also. No, you got it? Okay, great. So I think um, I love cilantro. I could eat it straight as a salad, basically, with ingredients <laughs> <laughs> on it. Um, use it, you know, sparingly if you want, um, or just really go for it. And I would say just really go for it. That's what adds so much flavor to it. I'm just taking everything that was roasted. Um, 
If you had a broiler, if it's a little darker, a little crunchier, that's fine. Okay, I think that all right. that's all great flavor. Uh, adding that in. So at this point, I would just oops, take it, where's my top here? Take it and just pulse it to start with. And then add the cilantro in. If you add that in right away, um, I guess depending on, on you know how strong your machine is, uh, it's kind of nice to get your liquids going first. And then I like to use the stems as well. I don't think that that's anything wrong with that. looking for is something that has uh, a little bit of like the salsa uh, aspect to it but yet I personally like it chunkier. Okay so yeah. So then get all of those ingredients together and then add your liquid at the end. So we're gonna just go quick lime. A little more salt. I don't know if you noticed, I, always rolling your lines on the table helps yes. kind of break yeah. up the juice a little bit. Sometimes they're so dry and you just can't get past it, but. These are pretty nice. These, these are, are really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah, those are good. You'll know real fast if you have little cuts on your hands. Oh yeah. <laughs> Especially like this, this time of year, like winter, early spring, it's like, oh boy. Yeah. So a little bit of lime juice, a little more salt. I'll definitely taste it and see if I need more at the end. I guess the reason why I didn't add the lime juice right away is because I wanted all of those, the vegetable matter to kind of work on itself. If I put too much liquid in right away, especially if you're working with something with more liquid, it's never going to quite pulverize, yes, especially sure. in a food processor. In a Vitamix, then it'll just yeah, you get a smoothie out of it, no problem. <laughs> Uh, could I have a fork or a spoon, please? Mm. Yes. Thank you. All right. So I kind of like it a little chunky like that. Mm, it's great. Yeah, nice. It's good. That's as quick as salsa verde can be. Yes, it's really cool. just like make it, you know, bake it, make it, and that's it. So as far as actually frying the rest of the sopes, as high as it goes. that is as high as it goes. Put about two tablespoons of oil uh, in the pan. Get your oil nice and hot. That's where the frying process actually you know, happens where you're browning them, Got getting it. them okay, nice and crunchy. Sure. And we're just gonna plate them and that's it. Nice, beautiful. Any more questions? Not right now. Any thoughts on a favorite question from the three of you up here? Ooh, a favorite question? There's a bottle of wine writing on your answer, so no pressure. Oh my goodness. I kind of like the quick pickle quest. Yeah, the quick yeah. Pickle. She can't win, she can't win, Katie can't win. We we'll give, we'll give Katie all the credit for turn of phrase, but no, she can't win. <laughs> That's great. I'll like, make an executive. It's going to be Kristen, Kristen who asked who asked about the, the, the favorite dish in several. I was like, restaurants. I said the favorite dish. I love the right. favorite dish. When you start talking Kristen about chili, you have you have a sure. bottle of wine yes. waiting for you at Leopold's. Lovely, yeah. amazing, That's great. nice job. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Do you want to plate one and then yeah, we're gonna plate one. We're to show everybody. Sorry, and we're get you halfway in the middle here. Just about done here. All right, tree's over. So sope down the bottom. At home, feel free, you could take them a little more crunchier too, if you'd like. Sure. Um, that's kind of what adds, you know, the flavor to it, is getting them a little brown, a little crunchy, a little soft in the middle. I would do salsa verde down. Oh, it's so pretty. I love the green. Yeah, so fresh, right? A little chorizo. The quickles. That's what I was there. Yeah. 
quickles, quickles. The quickles, yes. the quick, quick onions. So these were some that we had done, and now, uh, you know, are just presenting. Look at that color, they're so yeah, beautiful. they are. I noticed that all of these ingredients are elsewhere on the menu, and I thought that that was really... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, really Kind of all consistent, makes, makes yeah. sense for us, exactly. A little bit of cotija cheese. So cotija is, um, I think, a little bit in between, like on its uh, more mild side, like a feta, and then also like a Parmesan. And I just do a little bit of cilantro. Oh, that's beautiful, yay, yay. gorgeous. <laughs> Sorry. All right, yay, thank oh. you. You're welcome. Yay, I love it, I love it. Christine Clark, thanks so much for coming tonight. This is beautiful. Oh, really you. appreciate it. Uh, before we go, I want to give a quick thanks to our sponsors again, Kessenix, Leopold's, and Hinkley Productions. And again, if you'd like to ever uh, come join us in person for this and get a chance to sample food like this, please become a Cap Times member. You can find out about that at membership.captimes.com. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great Yay, night. Thank, thank you. you.